Content warnings. This episode contains topics that might be triggering to some listeners. The episode includes an on-screen death, as well as discussion of parental death, murder, and suicide, mentions of gun violence, and implied use of magic. Please listen with caution. Tell me everything you know about my father's death. I offered to answer your questions. I didn't hear a question. Is there a catch? What do you want from us in return for giving us answers? We're not looking to end up in moral doubt here. Look at you. So cautious. One might think you'd seen something to put you on edge lately. One might? So, is there a catch? I already made my offer. Unsolicited. Take what I say at face value. My methods of gaining information may be indirect. But I, myself, am not. I may ask you questions, yes. But only to better understand what information I have or to feed my own curiosity. You are under no obligation to answer in any case. So no, answer me these riddles three? I'm a psychic, not an ogre. Now, how about you tell me? Where are you in the process of your investigation? It's hard for me to keep track of the past, present, and future all at once. It would be more efficient to tell me what you already know, so I don't waste your time telling you over again. I spoke with my father's ghost. I'm not very sure about this. Oh, good. He found you. I was hoping I set him on his way back to you. You made him a ghost? Of course not. You can't make a ghost. But... I did encourage him to stick around after his body's death. And he believed that was possible? Not at all. But sometimes, even planting an outlandish idea is enough. People will embrace even the most foreign concepts, if they become desperate enough. So you told him to remain here in spirit because you knew he would become desperate enough to do it? Yes. Did you perhaps also consider helping him avoid the need to become a spirit? That's not the way my power works. I can't intervene in events. Only recount what has happened and what will happen. Is it that in itself intervening? Who's to say? A lot of people, I think. The guy who invented the butterfly effect, maybe. Nobody invented the butterfly effect. They discovered it. You know what I mean. Back to the matter at hand. Can you tell us what you told Mr. Prince? Yes, I can. You ask good questions. Can I designate you spokesperson for your little group? I don't think that would be very fair. I didn't ask about fair. Please answer the question. This is all starting to make my head hurt. I told your father that I thought he would benefit from a psychic reading. He consented, and I saw death in his future. His own. I told him this. He was already very addled and had arrived in such a state. He asked what he could do to avoid his fate, and I said there were many choices he could make. He could flee, hire security, hide in his home. Would any of those things have saved him? I couldn't say. He didn't choose those paths. And therefore, I don't see those futures. I do know, because of the manner of his death, it would have been incredibly difficult to evade. Say more. How so? He was slated to die through mystical forces, 
a curse's naughty sleep deterred and usually only fails to reach its target when purposefully redirected by the caster. A curse? You expect me to believe that my father was killed by a curse? No, I don't expect you to believe it. Not yet, anyway. That doesn't make it any less the truth. I'm sorry, ma'am, but that sounds like bullshit. Agreed. I never said you had to believe what I tell you. I would encourage it, though. It could save your own life. There's a very slim chance of that. But still, any edge you can get will certainly benefit you. I'm in danger, too. If you continue down the path you're currently fixated on, yes, you're in significant danger. Your friends as well. How do we protect ourselves? The same way your father could have. Run, hide, drastically alter your course in life. You'd likely have more luck than he did since a curse hasn't been set upon you. At least to the best of my knowledge. Until that happens, you have nearly a 50% chance of survival, I'd say. And what if we don't change anything? Then the curse will find you. You're talking about this curse like it's a living thing. Is it? It's not alive. Nor is it intelligent. It's more... instinctive. The caster, however, is both alive and intelligent. Murder is not committed without motive. So if you stand in the path of this person and what they stand to gain, you become the same obstacle as the late... Mr. Prince. Terrific. Okay, so who is the caster? <laughs> I believe that might be the most direct challenge you've yet posed to the caster. So much for staying out of his way. Just answer the question. I can't. I don't know who the caster is. Why not? He isn't yet in a position where a clear progression of actions would reveal him. You have a ways to go before you open that particular pathway. Nothing is ever simple. Do you have any more questions? Not now. Not yet. If we do come up with more as we keep investigating, can we come talk to you again? Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. I won't be here for much longer. You're closing down? Something like that. Well, thank you for what you told us. Gives us a lot to think about. My parting advice is to think about those things quickly. Drive safe and avoid the highway. There's an accident that will hold you up for nearly an hour. Thanks. So how much of that are we going to believe? For better or for worse, after seeing a ghost, I'll believe pretty much anything. Curse, no problem. Makes as much sense as anything else that's been going on lately. I agree, even though I don't want to. I don't believe in curses. But a couple of days ago, I didn't believe in ghosts. Look where that got me. Well, that brings up the question of how we go forward. We're apparently in danger. I understand if you guys want to back out. This isn't your battle to fight. I'm still in. I love making stupid decisions. And Horatio is far too nice to bail. That's... nice of you to say. I said that you were nice, not that you were smart. That's more like it. Feely, who are you texting? Ugh, it's Laertes. He wants to know where I am. Tell him. Let Polonius think I went to a psychic. 
If we're still doing this, I think it becomes more important to approach this problem obliquely. We should act like people would expect. I'll play the grieving son, you the doting girlfriend, Horatio, you're the supportive friend. That's a layer of protection between us and the killer. If they don't know we're a threat, they'll be less inclined to come after us. And behind the scenes? Behind the scenes, we're the scheming bastards that are going to catch my father's killer. Oh, there you are. Now I see you. But will you come for me? Or? Yes. You will. To whom it may concern, I apologize for the mess. There's $200 in the cash register. Please use it to pay for the cleanup. And make sure the poor souls doing the work get a decent tip. They have a grisly job, and I hate to add to it. Please don't trouble yourself about my death. I've seen it coming for quite some time now. And though I wish things had turned out differently, I'm glad I could usher a few of the next generation along their path before my time was up. Granted, theirs may be soon as well. But it comforts me to think I gave them a fighting chance. That's all I could ever ask for in my line of work. To give people the chance to make their lives better. I cannot change, only encourage others to do for themselves. And yet, here I stand at the hour of my demise, ready to embark upon the greatest change, the passage from life to death, the transformation from body to spirit. I've spoken to enough ghosts to know that I'd rather not hang around after dying, so I won't be heard from again. That's the purpose of this note, to say goodbye. Closure for myself, before I no longer have any need for closure. What an odd and utterly human ritual the act of leaving a note is. I have a cat who lives in the back room. She will need a new home. But before you take her to the animal shelter, Please know that she takes medication. It can be found on the top right shelf in the bathroom. The electricity and water bill is paid through the rest of the month. Keys are under the front counter. Help yourself to any furniture or decor you'd like. Waste not. <sighs> that should do it. Curse should be here any second. I'd imagine. And I don't own a gun, so it'll be interesting to see how I... Dad? Just a minute, Rosie. I'm just cleaning up. Okay, no rush. I just know you said you wanted to head over to the house and see if Hamlet was around. We really want to meet him. You understand this isn't purely a social visit, right, girls? You've said it a million times. Yes. Julia? Yes, I understand. You want to know everything we learned about Hamlet and what he's up to. Especially so after the interesting message I just heard from Polonius. Apparently, your cousin has been to visit a psychic. That can't be good. It's resolved now. But girls, I need you to report back to me exactly what that woman told him. Yes, father. <laughs> <laughs> 